So today I wanted to talk about internal and external bike gears. Now this comes up in my shop quite a bit because we offer a bike from a particular brand, Riesen Mueller. It's a German company. Their bikes are built to order and they're available with several different options. You can get several different internal gear options as well as a traditional derailleur option. So today I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit more in general about these different types of gear systems, but a lot of the conversation will be oriented around this particular brand and you know how those options might differ. External gears in the US probably is what most people are familiar with because traditionally most bikes used for sport use an external what be called a derailleur. Now that's traditional chain, um, you know, back in the day, I guess you could say, that it was considered like a 10 speed, that was a common one, and then you had 21 speeds and all these other different scenarios, and now you have all sorts of variations of that. More commonly, we're moving in the direction of having a single chain ring up front, so you don't have a derailleur in the front and you just have multiple gears in the back, anywhere from seven to 12, even 13 gears, which is kind of crazy in my mind. But in e-bikes, we're generally seeing somewhere between eight and 12 gears. And basically you have a traditional chain, you have a derailleur that moves the chain on a cassette or a freewheel, more commonly a cassette on a better quality bike, but you do sometimes see a freewheel on, um, on some bikes as well. Now that system is probably the most common, uh, at least here in the States, and uh, probably the easiest to get familiar to work on, that sort of thing. Internal gears or internally geared hub as it's generally referred to, or sometimes even IGH as an abbreviation, in that case, all the gears are inside of a casing, similar to a transmission on a car. You know, you don't see all those gears outside, but they're inside. Now, you have different variations of that. A two or three speed internally geared hub, which we might see on some pretty basic, simple city bikes. Not that common on electric bikes, but it can happen. Now, actually Shimano introduced their own five speed internally geared hub. But what we use most commonly in our shop are two different variations. One, a 14-speed hub from a company called Roloff. Now, that's a German company. They build these systems in Germany, and it's 14 speeds, which is a really wide range of gears, and actually one of the widest on an internally geared hub. And then the other system which we use quite a bit and it's becoming quite popular in the e-bike space is called Enviolo and it uses a technology called a continually variable transmission and basically the concept there is that there's no indexes to it. So with the traditional gear system you have uh, basically uh, indexes so it's similar to like a channel clicker on an older TV for um, you know your your selecting individual gears. Now with the continually variable transmission, it's almost like instead of selecting those three or five or eight or 14 gears, you're using it more almost like a volume dial where you're just kind of adjusting in more gradual increments and you could dial it in to exactly what your preferred cadence might be. Now, a lot of people like that. It's really simple to operate. You don't really have to think too much about it, and I kind of like that system as well, but there's pros and cons to all of these systems. Now that we talked a bit about the physical differences of these different systems, I want to talk a bit more about the performance between the, those different drivetrains, as we'd like to refer to them. Now, with the traditional derailleur, in many ways you'll see some of the best performance. I mean especially if you're looking for something that's lightweight and fast. Now, most, actually pretty much all race bikes out there today use a traditional derailleur system, whether it's a road bike or a mountain bike or other sorts of racing bikes, or with the exception maybe of like a track bike, which is gonna have a single speed system, they're all gonna have a derailleur on them. Probably the close second, or maybe it might even be pretty Pretty close in there would be like the roll-off hub because 
of the efficiency of that system. The derailleur is the most efficient when you're in the gear, you have a direct relationship, there's no sort of loss in that. And the roll-off system works in a similar way, as does many of the other indexed uh, internally geared systems. You might wonder, like, so if that's the best performing, like why would I want anything else? The roll-off, as I said, performs really great, but it has some other advantages. One of the big things is as far as a wide range of gears, the roll-off is going to have one of the widest at 526%. So that means you have a very low range gear. So if you wanted to climb a very large hill or the high gear, which if you're going to be pedaling at a higher rate of speed or even pedaling downhill or something like that, you can find with the roll-off, you can really uh, use the full range of those gears, where a derailleur quite often, you're not gonna have as much range there. Now we are seeing that some derailleurs, they're getting to have a pretty wide range of gears there as well. You see some that go from a 10 or 11 tooth cassette upwards mm -hmm. of a 52 plus tooth cassette in the rear. And with that, you have pretty close to a 500% gear range there. With that, you're getting pretty close to what a roll-off can offer as well, so. But the Enviolo hub maybe doesn't have the same efficiency. You do have a little bit of a loss in power when you're operating through an Enviolo hub, but the ease of use is really great. Um, it shifts very fast. You're able to shift through the gears very easily. And then the gear range is kind of somewhere in the middle, somewhere comparable to a derailleur. So it's 380%. So generally you'll see the NVOLO say N380 or something of that sort. That basically means 380 degrees of gear range. So you're not gonna be the fastest necessarily, but when you're pairing with the electric assist system, it's really no problem. And from our experience, uh, pairing that Enviolo hub with the electric motor, it works quite well and that's becoming very popular, especially in certain scenarios where somebody wants something to be very low maintenance. Probably the biggest topic that comes up for us when comparing these different systems is the maintenance cost. Because when you're riding electric assist bike, especially when you're using that bike to replace a car, you might find that you're putting a lot of mileage on that bike. And if you're putting a lot of mileage on a traditional derailleur system, you're gonna be maintaining it often. You're gonna be cleaning and lubing the chain, potentially replacing the chain and replacing other uh, cassette parts pretty often on that bike. Now with a roll-off hub over time, it's about 3,000 miles, you have to change the oil in it. And oftentimes you're gonna pair that roll-off hub with the belt drive and those belt drives will last tens of thousands of miles. So you're gonna see significantly more life out of a belt in comparison to a chain, especially when on a derailleur system. So the maintenance costs over time are much lower, but the initial costs are oftentimes greater. Now when looking at an Enviolo hub, there's actually no maintenance to the internals of the hub. Now generally speaking, when you use an Enviolo hub, it's gonna be paired with a mechanical shifter that uses cables. Over time, those cables might stretch out a little bit, they might need adjustment, and then over more extended time, they might need to be replaced or other small wear parts on that system will need to be replaced. But for the most part, it's very low maintenance, especially when compared to a derailleur. Now those are the maintenance costs, but the overall costs can be pretty significant. Now the difference between a performance derailleur and an Enviolo hub is gonna be pretty comparable. Maybe you're looking at a couple hundred dollars more, maybe a slight bit more if you're gonna pair it with a belt. But if you go for something like a roll-off hub, the additional cost is gonna be much greater. And oftentimes when looking at kind of a mid to upper range derailleur compared to a roll-off hub, depending if you go with the mechanical or electronically shifted version, you're gonna see an additional cost of $1,200 to $2,000. So pretty, pretty significant in, in that case. Now traditional derailleur, you shift through the gears, very quick and fluid. There's no real lag as you're shifting because 
as the derailleur moves through the gears, it's really just moving one to the next and you're keeping that pressure on the gear system. Now, when working with a traditional indexed internally geared hub, you do have to let off the pedaling a little bit. Now, the new electric bike systems like Bosch, they're oftentimes able to actually detect when you're shifting the gears and let off a little bit and allow that to engage a little bit smoother. But it's, it's something that takes a little getting used to. And from my experience, as you do get used to it, it becomes a pretty seamless experience as you're shifting through the gears, even with the internally geared hub, especially as you time it correctly. Now with the Enviolo, there's really no lag when shifting through the system. You can pretty much continue to shift even under load. Now it's ideal to let off the pedaling a little bit to allow it to engage really easily and put pretty minimal pressure on that shifting system, but, but you can shift under load, which is a nice feature. One other detail I'd like to mention in comparing a derailleur to an internally geared hub is when you can shift the bike. Now with a internally geared hub, you have the unique advantage that you can actually shift at a standstill. So if you're at a light or you're just starting out, maybe you forgot to shift into the lower gear or you're quickly approaching a hill, you might want to shift into that gear. Uh, and you can do that when you're not pedaling. Now, the slight difference with the derailleur system, you do have to pedal to change the gears. I mean, technically, you can change beforehand, but it's really not so good for that system, so I'd recommend against it. You wanna be pedaling and just do it through a smooth motion, change one gear at a time, uh, particularly if you're going to a higher gear, um, whereas if you're going to a lower gear, oftentimes some of the more modern derailleurs, you can actually shift multiple gears at a time. So, you know, many people really appreciate that. Uh, we find that there's quite often People are riding these bikes in urban environments. You have, we might have some scenarios that come up unexpectedly and you find that you suddenly came to a stop and now you're in the top gear and starting off is gonna be really challenging. But if you can shift into that lower gear before you start out again, you'll have a much easier time. Not to mention you're gonna be much more efficient in using your power as well as the electric bike's power provided that's uh, the type of system that you're using. So to recap, there's a lot of different options available and it might be challenging to choose what's gonna work best for you. People ask me all the time, what should I choose? I'm not really sure what's best for my specific application. And I think that's really what it boils down to. What is your application? And these different systems work better for different applications. For example, high mileage commuters, you're probably gonna be better with the internally geared hub because overall you're gonna have lower maintenance, you have less downtime, that sort of thing. But some people don't really mind doing their own maintenance on the chain and derailleur and that sort of thing. And, and, and in that regard, also there's more people that are familiar with that. The maintenance on these systems is not really that complex. It's pretty easy to pick up, um, but some people are more comforted to work with a system that's maybe more familiar and more common out there, more interchangeable with different parts and that sort of stuff. So something to consider in relation to that. For many that want to have just a really low maintenance bike, not really worry about it, just set it and forget it, I think the Enviolo Hub is a great way to go. But some people want that, but they also want a little bit more performance and the roll off is a great way to go in those scenarios. But keep in mind, you're gonna spend a little bit more money for that. So you really wanna consider if that added expense is gonna make sense for you specifically. So another thing to consider in relation to application is really the type of terrain that you're gonna ride on. If you're riding a mountain bike, most mountain bikes you're generally gonna use a traditional derailleur, although more commonly people are using roll-off hubs on mountain bikes. In Violo, you won't find that as much because it's just a, maybe not as efficient, the shifting experience is a little bit different, so generally you're gonna do a derailleur or a roll-off hub. So that's kind of off-road. Many urban riders, cargo bikes, using that Enviolo hub makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just really easy to shift when you're not pedaling. You can operate it. For me, it becomes like really something you don't have to think about much at all. I mean, other systems, you get used to them overall and, and it becomes pretty seamless, the experience of riding them, but there's 
probably the least amount of learning curve with the Enviolo hub compared to some of the other systems. So that's maybe another thing to consider if that's where you're at. And for new riders, people that are less experienced, Enviolo is quite often uh, what I usually recommend. But really, all these systems will work well. It's just a matter of considering like what might work best for you. Um, I'm always happy to answer questions about these things. I'm hoping that this video could serve as kind of a good primer on how these different gear systems work and what might work better for one person or the other. If you have any questions or comments, you know, just leave them below or reach out anytime. I'm happy to help. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. All right, see you soon.